Hi children, welcome to another Sunday School lesson. Before we begin our lesson, I hope all of you are seated down and ready to learn God's Word. Okay, I will give you 5 seconds now to sit down and prepare your hearts to receive God's Word. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, everybody ready? Then we'll start now with a word of prayer. So put your hands together and close your eyes. Let's pray. Our most gracious, loving Father in heaven, we thank you for another Lord's Day that you have given to us, that we can come and worship you and we can learn many wonderful lessons from the Bible. We pray that you help all the children here to be obedient children, to be humble and to receive your word, even with simplicity. Pray that today will also be the day of salvation for those who have not known Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that you will also help me to teach faithfully and accurately. We pray, Lord, you will bless all of us during this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today we'll be learning on the sixth commandment. The sixth commandment says, Thou shalt not kill. But before that, we will sing some songs first to praise the Lord. This song says, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. I pray that as you sing this song, you will really be filled with thanksgiving unto the Lord for this salvation that you have received. We will sing two times. We have sung this song last week also, but today we will be singing two new stanzas. Oh, be careful, let the tongue what you say. Can you point to me where is your tongue? Is it here? Here? Or here? Yes, this is your tongue. Oh, be careful, let the tongue what you say. And then, oh, be careful, let the mind what you think. God wants us to be careful what we say and what we think. He wants us to say good things and think about good thoughts so that our Father, God, when He looks at us, He will be pleased with us. Okay, let's try to sing this song and follow the actions along the song. Our last song is Whisper a 
prayer. Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer in the evening to keep your heart in tune. Anytime when you want to ask God for help, you want to ask God to control the words that you say or the thoughts that you think about, you can pray. You can pray to God any time of the day and God will hear you. Okay, so for this song, we will also sing two times and I will also do the actions. Week's memory verse. Last week's memory verse is taken from Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother. Please note that there's the second die before the word mother. Last week I told you wrongly, so please correct it. It is honor thy father and thy mother. Oh, okay, good. Good, then let's recite this verse together. I will give you some helping words only, but you have to do most of it on your own. Okay, ready? Let's try it. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Honour thy father and thy mother. Very good. I hope all of you remember the lesson that you have learned last week on Honouring our parents, which is obeying them, giving them respect, and taking care of them. Today, we'll be learning the sixth commandment, which says, Thou shalt not kill. And we'll be learning from the example of Cain and Abel. So take a look at this verse now. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Let's read the reference together and the verse together. On the count of three. One, two, three. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. So take a look at this picture here. See a hand holding a knife. And the question I want to ask you is, have you killed anyone before? Have you killed anyone before? Who raised up their hands? No, I'm sure none of you will say that you have killed anyone before. Because if you have killed someone before, you will be put into jail and you will not be attending the lesson today. Right? But take a look at this next picture. Hmm, you see? A man and a woman quarreling, fighting, and shouting at each other. They are both very angry. So I want to ask you a question, children. Have you been angry at someone before? Maybe your parents? Maybe your brother or sister? Or maybe a classmate at school? Somebody pushed you? Somebody stepped on you? Somebody took your toys without asking. Some things make us very angry. And when we're angry, what do we do? Some of us will throw tantrum. We will shout, scream and yell. Some of us we will bang the table, bang the door, throw our toys all over. 
Do you know that the Bible says that if you are angry at someone for no good reason, and this reason must be from the Bible, if you don't have a good reason from the Bible and you are angry, the Bible says that you have murdered that person, which means you have killed the person like what we have seen in the first picture. So this commandment, which says, thou shalt not kill, it doesn't just mean the literal killing. That means I must take a knife or I must take a stone and hit you until you die. No, there are other aspects to this commandment, like getting angry at someone, shouting at someone, calling someone names. All these things are not right in the sight of God. And God is not happy with us when we get angry with others. So today, we are going to learn from the example of Cain and Abel. Have you heard of them before? Do you know that in Genesis, we learned of the first two people whom God created. Their names are Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve had two children, two sons. The older son is called Cain, and the younger son is called Abel. And when Cain and Abel grew older, they had their own job, which is an occupation. Just like your parents, they have a job. Some of them are teachers, some of them are nurses, some of them work in the office. Each one of them have their own job. So likewise, Cain had his job. Cain was a farmer. A farmer is someone who grows crops, vegetables and fruits. So he take care of the plants, that's his job. And how about Abel? Abel was a shepherd. A shepherd is the person who takes care of sheep. So one day, God commanded Abel, Cain and Abel, that they must offer offerings and sacrifices unto him. So what did Cain and Abel do? They agreed. They decided that, yes, we must offer our sacrifices unto God because God is the creator. We want to thank God for all that he has done for us. We want to ask God for his blessings. So they offered their offerings unto God. So we take a look at this altar here with the fire burning in the middle. That's how the sacrifice was like in the Old Testament. They will burn the fire and then they will put their offering on top of the fire. And if God is pleased, if God receives the offering, then the fire will burn up whatever they have put on the altar. So Cain and Abel, they took their offering and they brought it to the altar. If you take a look at the picture carefully, you will see what Cain and Abel brought. See, Cain, he, remember he was a farmer, so what did Cain bring? He brought his fruits, vegetables, oh, a lot of them, and he carried them to the altar. And for Abel, he brought a sheep. And this is a sheep that is good, not one that is sickly or one that is injured. It was a very healthy and good sheep. He brought it to the altar and they both offered their offerings to God. But God did not accept Cain's offering. If you look at the picture, you will see that the fire only is at half of the, of the altar, which is at the part where Abel put the sheep. So God did not accept Cain's offering, but God accepted Abel's offering because Abel offered the right offering and he also offered in faith. He did it with the right attitude and with the right heart. So, when Cain saw that God did not accept his offering, hmm, he was very angry. His face, his hand, you can see how angry he was. Why was he angry? Because he felt that God was not fair. How come God accepted the offering of Abel, but not my offering? 
Why? I gave you so many fruits and these are very big and nice fruits and vegetables. How come you don't accept my offering? So Cain was very angry. He was angry with two people. He was firstly angry with God for not accepting his offering. And Cain was also very angry with his brother Abel because he felt like, oh, why is it that Abel, he's younger than me, but his offering was accepted. So he got very angry at Abel. And sometimes this is how we feel, right? For those of you who have siblings, you have a younger sibling, and sometimes when you are the one who is punished and not your brother or sister, you feel very angry. Angry at your parents, angry at your sibling, and you just feel so, so, so angry. You just want to scream and shout and cry. Right, some of you? Yeah. So let's take a look at Cain's anger now, whether this is the right thing to do or not. So, sometime later, Cain and Abel, they were at the field. So this was the field where they both worked at. Remember, Cain was the farmer and Abel was the shepherd. So they were at the field and Cain pretended that everything was okay. He didn't show that he was angry. It was just a normal day now. But in his heart, he planned something very evil and wicked against his brother. Look at that knife in his hand. So Cain, he thought in his heart that he wanted to kill his brother Abel. Took this knife and hmm, this knife is what he used to cut the crops. But he felt that maybe that's not going to be strong enough. So in the Old Testament, during that time, there were many big stones and rocks at the place that they lived. So he probably took one of these big rocks and hit his brother Abel and his brother Abel died. So Cain killed Abel. Why did he kill Abel? Because he was so angry in his heart. He was so angry that his offering was not accepted by God, but Abel's offering was accepted. So he killed his brother Abel. Can you imagine that someone like Cain, you can kill your brother, someone who is so close to you, someone whom you love so much, but just because of one thing, one wrong thing, you kill your brother. And do you know that once a person is killed, can he come back to life again? No, no more life. Once a person is killed, forever he is gone from the face of this earth. And when this happened, God was not happy. God punished Cain because Cain did the wrong thing. So from that day onward, God told Cain that you will be a fugitive. This means that Cain will not have any permanent home on this earth. He cannot live anywhere for long. He has to live in many different places and he cannot call anywhere his home. That's so sad, right? I'm sure all of us would want to have a place that we can call our home. We love our home the most. It is the place of peace and security and so much love in the home. But from this day onward, God punished Cain that he will no longer have a place that he can call a home. So we want to ask this question. What was wrong? What happened? Why was it that Cain killed Abel? The answer is because Cain's anger was wrong. If you recall just now that Cain brought the fruits, the vegetables, the things that he planted. Do you know that this was not what God required of him? When God told Cain and Abel to offer their sacrifices, God demanded that this sacrifice must be a bloody sacrifice. That means that once you put the sacrifice there and it burns with the fire, blood must be shed. So can you imagine the fruits shedding blood? Definitely not, right? Fruits are fruits, there's no blood. 
But for Abel, he brought the sheep. And this sheep, when you put it on the altar and when it's burnt, blood will be shed. So Cain, firstly, he did wrong because he offered the wrong thing that God did not demand of him. He offered the fruits when God wanted a bloody sacrifice. Secondly, not only did he offer the wrong thing, he also did not repent because when God did not, when the fire did not consume his fruits, remember just now only half, right, the fire, when the fire was not there, Cain should have known that what I did was wrong. But instead, Cain, even though he knew what was wrong, he did not repent and do the right thing. Instead, he got angry with God and Abel. That's definitely not what is right in the sight of God. So these are the two things that Cain did wrongly. And his anger resulted in murder and the death of his brother. This is really very, very, very sad. So I want to tell you, remember I said that killing the commandment thou shalt not kill is not just about the physical killing, that means to kill someone. No. God also talks about killing and murder in the heart. So this murder in the heart is when we get angry with someone without a just cause. This means that we get angry with someone just because of our own name just because someone did wrong against me, just someone stepped on my toe, someone take, took my toys, then I get angry. That is the wrong kind of anger. And God says that if you get angry because of the wrong reason, you have killed the person and you have broken the sixth commandment. Another way we can break this sixth commandment is when we call someone names. For example, we call someone, you stupid person or you fool. God is very angry because God says that all of us human beings are made in His image. We are all made in the image of God. Even unbelievers, everyone who, who's on this earth is made in the image of God. And God says that Every life is important. Everyone is important. And God desires that everyone will be saved. Everyone will come to believe in Jesus Christ. And those who don't think that the life of others are important, those who call them names, call them fool, call them stupid and degrade people, this is murder in the sight of God. And you have committed a crime against God. So this is our memory verse for today. Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. So children, I want you to remember that killing is not just a physical killing. Not just taking a knife against a person. But killing involves the words that you say to hurt somebody or the anger that you feel in your heart. This is wrong in the sight of God. So, whenever you are angry, ask God to help you. Ask God to help you to control yourself so that you don't say the wrong things and think wrong thoughts. That's why we sang just now, Oh, be careful later, tell what you say. Oh, be careful later, mind what you think. Whenever you feel angry, remember, pray to God, ask God to help you, help you to control your anger so that you will not sin against Him. So let's read the memory verse together in closing. Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Very good children. Now let us close with a word of prayer. So put your hands together and let's pray that God help us to apply all this into our lives. Our most gracious, loving Father in heaven, 
We thank you for this lesson that we can have on the Sixth Commandment. We pray, Lord, that you will help us not to sin against you. We pray that you will help us to control our mouth and the words that we say. Help us to control our thoughts and the evil things that we think against others. We pray that whenever we are angry, we will always remember to pray and we will always ask you to help us. We pray that you will help all the children who have listened to this to really be a shining light for you in this world. Help them to live according to the Bible. Help them to be good children to the parents and also to the people that they meet in school. We pray that you also protect the children from any harm and danger and from this pandemic now. Pray Lord that thou will continue to help all of us through the rest of the week that we will live for you, will obey your word in every aspect of our life. We commit all these things into thy loving hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.